Energy creates about 75% of our climate emissions. But energy is so fundamental to everything we do. Even though energy is only 4% of global GDP, the economy grinds to a halt without it. If we're going to stabilize the climate and stop undermining the life support systems of the planet, we need to redesign the system so that we're not digging up billions of tons of fossil fuels and burning them every year because we're harnessing the clean energy around us. But there's a certain fear of this transition. The early estimates of the energy transition were extremely high. Now, we're actually saying something very different. It is cheaper to be using cleaner technology than dirty technology. We estimate that the savings will be the order of $12 trillion. So it's very likely that this will make energy cheaper than it's ever been in history. When you disrupt a major sector that is literally worth trillions of the global economy, it's going to be exciting. I've been working on problems of prediction my whole life and making intelligent decisions about how to cope with climate change is dependent on being able to anticipate a decade or two into the future, what are the costs of energy technologies gonna be? Our paper looks at the historical behavior of energy technologies over the last century. And the key message is that on one hand, you have energy technologies like fossil fuels, which cost about the same as they did a century ago. But solar energy, for example, which had its debut with the Vanguard satellite in 1958, now costs about a 5,000th of what it cost then. We think this is very likely to continue. And if you take the kind of discount rates that people have widely proposed are sensible, then it's the order of $12 trillion cheaper. And we know that because we've tested the methods on more than 50 different technologies by pretending we were in the past and didn't know the future. We're saying we actually save money. So there is no cost. It's, it's a net benefit. And that'll have many positive effects on the world. Almost all of the published papers in the academic literature have systematically made projections that have assumed renewable energy would be deployed at a much slower rate than it has been deployed and that the costs would drop much more slowly. They're systematically wrong and wrong by a substantial amount. And that makes a big difference in terms of how quickly we make the transition. In many instances, the costs of going to a cleaner future are not high, they're not even low, they're negative. We're arguing that it's an opportunity. It's something that's gonna save us all money. As this sinks in, and as we get more evidence that this transition is happening quickly and cheaply, people will start to pile on the bandwagon, and suddenly everybody will be eager to participate in making the transition happen. Uh, means that even if it weren't for climate change, it would still be really valuable to pursue the green energy transition and do it quickly. I think this reframes the whole debate. I think we're going to see quite some big changes in the next decade. There's a vast amount of energy all around us all the time that we can capture and start to use. So I'd be stunned if we don't see an exponential increase in renewable energy in the energy system over the coming decades. Now some of those innovations will take longer than 10 years to come to fruition. But the ideas that are already proven in the lab and now coming out of the lab into pilot and demonstration phases, it's cheaper, it's better, it's higher tech, just do it anyway. And so the businesses that position themselves to be leaders in this transition are going to profit by it. The consumers are going to profit by it. So we just win by having to pay less for things that we use all the time. It might even be a win-win-win-win scenario. If solar energy and wind and batteries and hydrogen electrolyzers become very cheap, then not only do we have cheap energy, we have non-volatile energy prices because their prices won't fluctuate like fossil fuels do. We have clean energy that doesn't produce pollution. The ability that any country that wants it can have energy security. 
And then the biggest win of all is we prevent climate change from being worse than it's already going to be. We should really think of nature as a garden that we have to tend. And so we need to be good custodians of that garden.